Hello, welcome back to Parser Hacking. We're continuing our work on the Recursive Descent Parser. More recently, we worked on method definitions and assignment. And uh, coming from that, I'd like to be able to do method calls, but we need to take a little diversion uh, before we can fully go into that because there's something interesting that the Ruby parser does and I can show you with this Ruby parser gem that we're that we're using uh, if you just say foo then that is assumed to be a method call or a message being sent to something in this case nil which means uh, well I won't get into that but anyway it, it assumes that it's a method call um, however, if I say foo equals one, and then I do foo, it doesn't. It changes from a call to an LVAR. So what is happening here is the parser itself is keeping track of local variables so that it can know if you are trying to uh, look up a variable or if you're trying to make a method call. And um, variables override method calls. So if I make a foo method here and I do foo, then it assumes that it is a, a local variable lookup. So it's still doing the same thing. However, if I put some parens around it, then it goes, oh, you must mean a call to foo, the foo method. So this is kind of a peculiar thing that the Ruby uh, programming language does that the Ruby parser does and um, it's interesting that it does it at parse time not in the runtime uh, so that's something we want to mimic and it's gonna take uh, like I said a little bit of a sidestep from what we've been working on and I think we want to create a whole new test for this uh, parses method calls versus local variable lookup and it's going to look a little bit something like this. Let's just, I think I can just write this nil, nope, uh, s call nil mm, foo. I think, I think it looks like that. Let's just make sure Ruby RV parser test, Natalie parser test. That indeed is what it is. And so let's see what happens when we run this through our current parser. We get a fix me string, and that's because we haven't done anything with identifier node to Ruby. We haven't haven't handled that quite yet. So let's go to our parser HPP and go look at the to Ruby to do to do fix me. I don't remember what it was. There it is. Um, so what's the simplest thing we can do to make this pass? Well, the simplest thing we can do would be to return a new sexp value, env. Um, what is that supposed to look like? So it's going to return a symbol intern env call, followed by, in our case, a nil, because we don't have um, the receiver of the message. We don't even know anything about that yet. So we're just going to make it nil for now. And then the, uh, name as a symbol. So another symbol value intern EMV, uh, name. I think that will get that first test passing. And now, um, obviously that's not correct. That's not the final solution, but it gets us moving on to uh, writing another test. So now if we say foo equals one, foo, I'm just going to cheat here, run this through Ruby, copy paste, so I don't have to do all of the typing. And now let's, uh, let's see this failing test. The assignment should work, l assign foo as slit one. Okay, so this part, worked exactly like it should. Uh, this call did not. And so we need to figure out how we're going to do this. Uh, well, let's go down here. Where is identifier node actually 
used parse identifier. And parse identifier is a null denotation. You'll remember from previous videos that null denotation is just something with nothing on the left side of it. Uh, and it just sort of stands alone. So where is this called? I think what we're going to do is have a vector of local variables. And so let's call this locals equals, uh, and we'll make it a pointer here, env. Um, oh, and it needs to have a type, of course. Uh, local variables. I suppose we could do a symbol value um, pointer. That way it could be easily compared. I think that would work. Um, okay. No matching constructor for initialization. Uh, do I have to give it an, an, a list? No. What, 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 what? No matching constructor, okay. Well, I thought that's how you did it. That should have worked. Interesting. No matching constructor. Why? I'm using vector here. Hmm. And I have all of Natalie header loaded. Yeah, I'm a little confused about that. Oh. <clears throat> I don't, I don't need the environment. That's, uh, yeah, don't know what I was thinking there. Kind of weird. Okay, uh, back to back to reality. So uh, if we have some uh, an array or a vector of local variables, we're and it is going to be maybe a little bit dirty just looping through to to see if the variables in there, the variable name. Uh, but I also don't want to do a hash map, but that seems a little bit heavy because generally you only have one or two or, you know, maybe 10 um, variables in within a, a, a certain scope. And even if you had 100, that's fine. I mean, we're not talking millions here. So um, until it's a problem, I'm just going to go with the simplest data structure that works. Uh, and we can always optimize later. So, so we have our local variables and anytime we do a parse assignment uh, expression, which is a left denotation because it requires an identifier on the left and then an equal sign. Um, anytime we have a parse assignment expression, I believe we want to add to this local variable array, which means we also get to pass it around, which means we also need to redefine our two uh, little aliases here. Um, and I wish, now I'm wishing I hadn't called it FN1 and FN2. So let's go ahead and rename those while we're here because I want to, uh, I think I want to do parse FN1 is actually parse left function. And then parse FN2 is parse Oh, whoops, that was null. Oops, 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 oops. Parse fn1 is parse null function. And parse fn2 is parse left fn. Okay, so that makes it a little bit simpler. I don't have to worry about those numbers matching. And this is going to accept the vector of symbol node pointers. And it's going to accept a pointer to that. And that means that any of these that are returning or that are accepting arguments uh, need to accept this same thing. Symbol 
uh, value pointer pointer locals and let's just copy that so parse assignment expression parse grouped nope 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 it has to have a left is it just these two wait is it really just these two uh it is yeah those are the only two we have Okay, well, now what are we complaining about? Cannot initialize return object of type. Man, that's really hard to read. Let's let's get this from make. Uh too few arguments. Well, that is true. 306. We can fix that one pretty easily. This needs to get locals. Uh-huh. 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 Not sure what the difference is there. <laughs> I read that a couple times and it looked exactly the same. Can I convert this? Oh, did I do symbol node somewhere? I did. It's supposed to be value. Ah, now you're happy. Helps if you type the right type. The right type. Uh, so the question is, did that break anything? I don't think it did, because I don't think we changed anything of substance. The same test should fail, but all these other ones are still passing, so that's good. So... Um, you can see I'm kind of stalling here. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how this will work. I guess um, parse assignment expression will work right here. The assignment node. So right before we do anything, first of all, let's just print f left. Uh, I believe it's an identifier, but I just want to. Well, yeah, sure it is. It's right here. Uh, so we can just say locals push um, symbol value and turn EMV left and left is uh, an identifier which has a name I believe that doesn't work though Identifier node, let's go up to here. It doesn't have a name. Well, we'll just give it a name. Constar name is M identifier name. And let's jump back to where we were. Uh, we're just going to cast this right here. Oh, my. Oh, my. Now, are you happy? Possibly not. Left identifier left identifier and left identifier there we go okay so now we're pushing and just to make sure we didn't break anything now we're pushing that local variable onto our vector same failure great and now that we have that information We need to get it to the place where this uh, where this call is being generated, which is in the identifier parse identifier node. No nope, parse identifier. So parse identifier is here, and it needs a copy of the locals vector. Hmm. 
but that's going to break you know maybe everything needs a copy of the of the locals vector symbol value star star so we get to do that everywhere parse def locals let's just add this to all of these I don't know if that one needs it though parse lit parse string and parse identifier so wherever this is called we get to pass the locals as well and now let's see what I missed oh I missed a lot missed a lot no matching function call to parse identifier which is a uh, 328 pass the locals here uh, also 334 locals I'm just gonna cheat and go here pass that in everywhere now what are we missing last one 449 parse grouped expression does not have the locals now are you happy yes okay nothing should have changed good so now now the parse identifier is getting a copy of the locals Oops, let's find it. There it is. Uh, I think I need to pass the uh, pass the locals here. Oh, now there's an interesting thought. Okay, let me explain my thought. What if you say foo, but you define, you set it as a local variable afterwards in the same scope, does it know? No, it doesn't know. It's only for things set before. That is good to know. So we don't just want to pass this locals in because it might change by then. So we actually want to look up, um, look it up here. Like, does it exist as a local? So let's say uh, bool found let's see l is alvar equals false um, for auto uh, local locals is alvar say if local equals equals Uh, I need to come back to this. Let's go look at our identifier note. How does how does it work exactly? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. It takes a token, and the token literal. Now, one thing I'm not doing properly here is checking because uh, an identifier node. The way we built it can be an instance variable and other stuff, but let's not get hung up on that too much. But what if I say, if it matches, No, not new. Symbol value return. Uh, current token dot literal, which is a string. So if it matches the name symbol, then is Elvar is true and break from the loop. Is Elvar. Now let's go keep track of that over here. 
in the struct for identifier node, we're going to say bool is lvar going to m is lvar is lvar. You kind of set it down here, bool m is lvar false. Uh, private field is not use, but it will be because right here, we're going to say if is lvar, then do something else. It's a function call, it's a method call. Uh, and right here, we're gonna return a sexp. Love saying that, uh, lvar, let's see, it was lvar, right? Yep, and then the nil can go away and we do the name just like that. And this is m. Okay, moment of truth. Did I do it right? No, of course not. Um, well, that's a little bit surprising. So let's run this outside of the test. So we just have one line of code here and we run this here do 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 p parser dot parse and let's run that okay now let's do is lvar let's go back to where we were i'm going to say printf local equals this local inspector V. Actually, let's do this local and then uh, name symbol equals this. Get rid of that. Name symbol inspect stir env. Well, are we? So my question is, are we even getting inside of this loop? Um, is, well, is there anything uh, in the vector for us to loop over? I suspect there's nothing. Yeah, I'd say there's nothing. Let's just say, um, yo, are, we are getting to there, yes? No, we're not. Oh, well, it helps if you run make. Helps if you run make. Okay, we got into the yo. We got into here, but there's nothing in our locals variable. Uh, locals size is... Zu, I believe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, our locals is size zero. So, oh, I have a theory. I have a theory. Okay. So in parse expression, which is here. Um, oh, you'll notice I did add some debugging here because I was really confused uh, the other day. I was uh, testing out a theory and, and anyway, I just added this. But um, I wonder, actually, let's turn that on and let's see if that, if that helps. Nat C XX flags equals, uh, what was it called? Nat debug parser. That debug parser. So hopefully that will print out a little bit more info about when we enter this function and also when we loop in this inner loop here. Sort of our core uh, core uh, loop for the parser. Of course, it has to recompile everything. Okay. So, entering parse expression with precedence zero, current token, yada, yada, yada. Fascinating. So, Oh, okay, so we enter this, we, we run this twice because the first one is the assignment, foo equals one, 
And then the second one is where we look it up. So that's here, locals size equals zero. Okay, so parse identifier. Hmm, interesting. Okay, <laughs> so parse excitement expression. I assume that this is doing the right thing. Let's just for funsies, let's print the local size there. Assign. Good old printf debugging. Uh, so it's definitely adding it to that, but the problem is that we enter the parse expression function again and we wipe out, like we create a new locals um, vector. So this isn't the right place to create it. We actually We actually only want to create it if it's null, I believe. So what if we do this? Um, vector symbol value pointer locals equals null putter. And we say, um, can you do that? Equals locals or say if if not locals, then do it this way. Okay. So that will help a little bit. And then anyway, we call parse expression. I believe we want to save the um, locals. Okay, so parse body needs to have locals. Just got to pass it all the way down. And the reason I can't make this an instance, uh, like a member a data, member data, what, what is it called? Like a variable on the, the class, um, a data member on the class, that's it. I can't make this a data member because we need to use the recursive nature of our parser uh, because later on we're going to have classes and modules and when you get inside, of, well even in methods, if you get inside of a method, the, the local variables that are outside of it that were defined above or outside of that scope don't count. So we do need a new local variable vector. So we can't just have one global one. Um, that that would be global variables. <laughs> These are local variables, so we need to use the recursive nature of the parser. Uh, did I put this in the wrong place? There we go. So vector symbol. I wish I would have copied this so I don't have to keep typing it. Locals, uh, and then we want to pass the locals in here. Uh, lowest is the default. Uh, where else is parse expression? Here, locals, locals, locals. And I think that's all of them. So now we shouldn't overwrite it anymore. Still says call. Still says call, and our local size is still zero. Interesting assignment. Okay, I just need to puzzle this out. Is there something? I am missing. We clearly set it here. 
and then we call parse expression here and we pass in the locals so let's jump let's jump up to here again And uh, print, let's print uh, the locals here. Parse expression locals. Somewhere we're losing it. Uh, so we're, we're fine here. But then we lose it. Uh, okay. Oh, it's the tree. Right. Oh, right. So there is no recursive call of parse expression because we're done, uh, like we're done with this one and then the next loop through the tree or this while loop here. Uh, so I just means I just need to build it in a little bit different spot. Uh huh. And let's not even have a null. Well, kind of have to, don't we? Yeah, let's get rid of these defaults because it's just making things a little more complicated. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Yep. Parse expression. Parse expression takes lowest and it takes locals. And the locals are going to be defined right here. Auto. Okay. Did we figure it out? It's funny, I just, um, yes! Yes, I built it in the wrong spot. I just keep ha having to keep bubbling it up until I got to the, the right spot. Um, I think this just shows that even someone not bright like me can write a parser. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of our debug flag uh, because that's a little bit noisy. And let's also get rid of our printf's. I think that's it. Almost. Yeah. Oh, this is so fun. This is so fun. I love doing this stuff. Uh, I love the learning experience. I love the failures and the heartache. I just love it all. Now, question is, why is that? Did I not save that? Um, apparently not. There we go. Okay, so let's run our parser test and hopefully get some dots and no Fs. Yeah. Okay, let's add that to our index so I don't screw anything up. Uh, I mean, I could quit right there and be a happy man. I really could. That, that just made my day. I just love that. Uh, I mean, obviously there's more to do. So let's do this let's say we have a method bar that calls foo end now the way ruby works this is not going to return a local variable foo because inside of this method bar it can't see this local variable foo because i, I just can't and i'm going to prove that right now <laughs> with the Ruby parser gem. Uh, yes, so you'll notice here it says call foo, not LVAR foo. So we want to mimic that as well. And I am very sure that our parser is going to fail at that because it's going to think it's a local variable. Yeah. Okay, so the way we fix that is inside of our parse def, we need to create a new locals. Um, yeah. So it's just going to ignore this. And it's going to create its own. Let's just do it here. Locals equals, uh, don't I have that in my copy buffer thingy? Because I'm lazy. 
auto. So now we get a new locals. Oh, I do, I guess I do need it here. We'll see if that makes that test pass. Boom, we're adding that to the index. Oh, this is so great. This is just so great. Uh, I don't think I need a test for this, but just, just for funsies, uh, I want to see that that does the right thing. I think it will. I don't have any reason to believe it won't, but I want to see it. Uh, yeah. So it did a local assign L varfu. I'm happy with that. I don't even need that test. Oh, okay. So I mentioned earlier that it shouldn't do it for instance variables. Instance variables are different uh, entirely. Hmm. Well, let's just make sure that if we say at foo equals one and then call foo, that it's going to be what we would expect. Oops. Okay, that actually works just fine. Um, did it work for the right reason? Because I'm pretty sure this is getting, well, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. This is getting added to the locals vector. I mean, maybe there's no harm in that other than it's just gonna slow things down. Yeah, I think I'd rather not. Uh, so anywhere we have locals push right here. Let's only do it for locals. So if left identifier uh, token type is token type uh, Well, I thought, did I not call it local? I just called it identifier, yeah. Okay, so if it's an identifier, then we're gonna do this. And let's make sure that that still passes. Yes. Um. Is there anything else we can do with this? We can't do the parens yet because that's gonna be a whole nother video, I think. I'm trying to think if there's anything I can do without parens and without arguments because that's that's gonna be an, another another night. I think I'm happy with this. Uh, and this turned out really nice. So to recap, we create this vector of locals and uh, we initialize it to, uh, to, an, to an empty vector at the beginning of our parser with the, with the tree function and we pass it around everywhere. and. If we go into a parse def, which is a new method, now later on we'll have parse module, parse class, we'll do the same thing. But if we go into parse def, we create a new locals vector and we ignore the one that we got passed in. Don't care, just ignore it completely. I have to accept it because of this signature, function signature has to match, but that's fine. We'll just accept it, ignore it, don't use it for anything. We create our own, we pass it in, it recursively gets passed to everything below it. And uh, and then when the call stack bubbles back out, then wherever, uh, you know, whoever called parse def has, still has its own copy of locals. It's not getting stepped on. Um, so that works really nice. Yeah, what else can I say? That, that turned out pretty nice. And uh, 
I don't know. It didn't seem too complicated. I think I built it up in my head as being maybe a little harder than it really is. Uh, and this is pretty cool. So I think in the next video, we'll, we'll go down here and we'll do parentheses. Uh, there's kind of a neat little trick we get to do with our Pratt parser. Uh, I've been reading in the, the Go book, the uh, Thorsten Ball book, Writing Interpreter in Go, uh, about how to do that. And so we'll just write some code right out of the book for that. And I uh, appreciate you hanging out with me tonight on this fun little adventure. Uh, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye.